my name is Kelly McElligott and I'm one of the educators here with Bywater Solutions and I have this short tutorial on how to add new patrons in your Koha system. Now here we are on our main page of your staff clients and we're, we have a couple different ways to get to our patron module. We could go ahead and click patrons or we can also go to this top option of patrons. From this patron module I can go ahead and still search that patron name or their card number up here. And I have another way to um, search my patrons by filters on the left. And then I have a couple different options here. I can create a new patron. I have that option of creating a quick new patron. And then I also have a patron list option. I'm gonna go ahead and click new patron. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a new adult patron. So here is the form for adding a new patron and you can see all the fields that can be filled out by your staff in entering that new patron information in the system. Any red fields that are in your system form will, are required. Now this is a system preference so if you wanted other fields to be required or to take some away you can, go, you can do that in your system preferences. So here we are, we have our um, last name and first name, so I'm going to go ahead and fill something out. Then we have our main address. So this would be what would be showing up on the patron detail. Go ahead and add this and add the zip code. Now we have our contact information. Now both the primary phone and the primary email will show up on those um, transit slips and in the patron details. You have other fields that you could fill out for secondary phones, other phones, secondary email, all those can be accessed through the patron um, detail screen, but this will, the primary phone and primary email will be in that snapshot and I'll show you that at the end. So let's go ahead and add a phone number. We'll go ahead and add an email to that. Now we do have an alternate address and an alternate contact. If you had um, seasonal patrons or maybe you had students that you wanted to put a parent's address in there, you could also fill that out. Below that, we have our library management field. Now we have in red, we also have our card number, we have the library, if you're part of a branch system, then that would have a drop down of all the branches part of your system. And then we also have a category. Now our card number, if we purchase our library cards at our, at our library, so I would go ahead and scan that barcode on the library card that I'm gonna give the patrons. You can also set it up that um, the card numbers are assigned by Koha. So I will go ahead and give this a number. I'm gonna keep it at that lib central area tech library. And then the category was adult, which I originally picked when I created a new patron, but at this po point, you could go ahead and switch that if you wanted. Now in library setup, we have our registration date, which defaults to today, and you can um, leave the expiration date blank for it to auto calculate. So if you have your patron category adult set up to expire every two years, then GoHa will go ahead and fill that date in for a two years from today for you. However, if you had this patron that you wanted to expire in a month, you could go ahead and fill that form out with a new date. The next two boxes are our OPAC note and our circulation note. The OPAC note is going to show up when the user logs into their OPAC account and the circulation note will be something that will be displayed on the staff client to other staff members. Further down, we have our username and password. So the username and password is what your patron will log into the OPAC with. So that could be a first name, last name, username, it could be their card number again, um, and then you would go ahead and assign a password. So I will do Now we also have an area for additional attributes and identifiers. So my library system has a favorite color to fill out if I wanted to and also a previous system ID. Your library may not have these, which is fine and it's something that you can um, add or not add. 
Our final area is our patron messaging preferences. Now, as the adult patron has been set up in my system prior, all adults would get a email for item due, a three day in advance email saying something is going to be due, and an SMS hold filled. Now, if you wanted, if this patron actually wanted more emails or less of those emails, they can be adjusted here on this patron, patron messaging preferences. Since they don't have a cell phone, I'm going to unclick that and I'm going to say that's going to get sent via email. And this is just a change to this patron's messaging preferences. I can go ahead and hit save. Now this is a great fail safe that if you were entering information, um, Koha is going to look for duplicate patrons. And this is, says that, is this a duplicate patron record? And I can go ahead and view that existing record to verify if it's an actual same or it's no, it's a duplicate um, and you have those options. So I'm gonna go ahead and say not a duplicate, save as a new record. Now here I have, I have the library um, patron that I just created here. This is their detail page, which you can get to from here on the left. You can see their address, the primary phone number, the primary email, their category, and their home library. Once again, that is here. You can go ahead and see their card number and also their username. I do, my system also has that opportunity to go ahead and upload a patron image. So if that is something that your library has set up, you could go ahead and do that. All these areas, I could go ahead and edit at any point and go directly to that area. So I'll just go ahead and hit edit to this. And this is gonna bring me to that specific area in the patron form. Further down, you can see those patron messaging preferences, as well as now their checkouts at the bottom. So that is how you add a new patron in the Koha system. This tutorial is a production of Bywater Solutions. Thanks so much for watching.